Welcome to the Tree of Extraterrestrial Life. It may not look like much now, but this tree holds all the secrets of alien kind's history. I have a feeling that there are some scandals and conspiracies lurking in there, but more on that later. First, we're going to look at rates of speciation, or to put it more simply, the factors that influence how quickly new species emerge. Just to give you a refresher before we get going, remember that speciation is the process by which populations become unable to reproduce and generate fertile offspring, leading to the formation of new species. Scientists use a technique called the molecular clock model to look at how many genetic differences there are between two species. These differences can be used to make an educated guess at how long ago two species shared a common ancestor. Because geneticists use cutting-edge research to make these models, we represented molecular clock models with this ultra-modern, high-tech clock of the future... Hold on. That's not even digital. Modern in the 1950s, maybe. Well, back to the real cutting-edge stuff. Scientists can now use data on how quickly mutations accumulate to work backwards from the DNA sequences of two modern populations. This allows them to estimate how long ago the two lineages were similar enough that they may have belonged to the same species. Using molecular clock models allow scientists to make inferences about evolutionary history when these patterns are not obvious at first glance. What if closely related species evolve super different phenotypes? Or distantly related species evolve super similar phenotypes? In these situations, DNA sequencing and molecular clock models are extra valuable in figuring out who is most closely related to whom. So, molecular clock models can be used to estimate an evolutionary timeline, but why is the timing of speciation so variable in the first place? How fast populations diverge from a common ancestor and undergo speciation is often dependent on the ecological niches they occupy. Wait, niche? Niche? Fun fact! Both pronunciations are correct, and I hate the English language. But anyways, an ecological niche is the role a species plays in its environment. This Qualian's niche is inhabiting the niche in this tree. You see what I did there? A niche includes the things a species needs to survive, like their specific food, habitat, and climate requirements. A niche also includes the roles a species plays in their ecosystem, like being another species' prey or competitor. I'm sure part of this Qualian's niche is devouring all the tasty alien grubs in there. When all populations of a species occupy the same niche, reproductive isolation is usually rare. Since individuals are in the same place at the same time, they have plenty of opportunities to mate. In these cases, speciation proceeds very, very slowly. Since these Qualians all occupy the same niche, they won't be speciating anytime soon. They're all snoozing to remind us that their niche is static. Plus, it looks like they'll have plenty of mating opportunities at that slumber party. Now, this Qualian isn't sweating that she wasn't invited to the slumber party because her niche has opened up to the rest of the tree. It's likely she could become reproductively isolated from the rest of the Qualians as she spreads out into new niches, leading her lineage to speciate if she reproduces with other isolated Qualians. If the Qualians become able to occupy lots of different niches at once, like all of these branches that each house a unique ecosystem, the Qualians could rapidly speciate into many new species. This is called an adaptive radiation, which we've represented with radiating radioactive moss branching out to all these new species. Adaptive radiations may occur because an environmental change opens up new niches, like when mammals quickly diversified after dinosaurs went extinct on Earth. Alternatively, radiations may also happen if a novel phenotype emerges that allows individuals to occupy new niches, like birds quickly diversifying when flight allows them to reach new habitats. Now, from the look of those alien birds, I think maybe I should be worried about this radiation too. Okay, well, there's a lot going on in this tree. So before I march straight into my doctor's office to get this radiation stuff checked out, let's review this Qualian history. Molecular clock models analyze the genetic differences between lineages to estimate when two species last shared a common ancestor. A species' ecological niche is the role it plays in its environment. As it turns out, the niches a species occupies are crucial for determining if and how fast populations will undergo speciation. When members of a population all occupy the same niche, speciation is typically very slow. On the other hand, if environmental conditions allow a species to occupy a variety of niches, these populations may experience reproductive isolation and undergo adaptive radiations. 
The end result of an adaptive radiation is that multiple new species quickly diverge from a single lineage. Well, I better head out before I expose any more dark evolutionary secrets. I have a feeling I'm already on the Qualian government's watch list. Wait, has that white van been following me the whole time? 